Hi, this is Pat Cooper. Don't go away because we're coming right back to profiles. I hope. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Marley Hall. Today's guest is comedy legend Pat Cooper. With over 50 years in show business, Cooper is busier than ever, appearing in Florida, Las Vegas, and Atlantic City. In 2004, Cooper was included in Comedy Central's TV series, 100 Greatest Stand-Ups of All Time. He's also a frequent guest on radio programs, including I Miss in the Morning and The Howard Stern Show. After a short break, we'll join our host, Mickey Burns, as he welcomes the unpredictable Pat Cooper to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. Pat Cooper's big break came in 1963 via TV's Jackie Gleason show. After that show, his life would never be the same. He was on to the big time, performing at top supper clubs, hotels, and casinos throughout the country. That meant performing in the same show as Frank Sinatra, Tom Jones, Paul Anka, Tony Bennett, and many others. Pat Cooper is a legend in the business, and he is still going strong after more than five decades. So let's join our host, Mickey Burns, as he welcomes funny man Pat Cooper to Profiles. Kids today, two days old, get their teeth already. <laughs> Barracudas come out of the mouth like this here. We go to a dentist, why does he cry? He's teething. Massage his gums, here's my bill, $400. When I was teething, my mother put the finger in the wine, in the mouth. <laughs> I was in the crib. <laughs> Comedian Pat Cooper, welcome to our show, Profiles. It's thank a you. pleasure meeting you my again. My pleasure, thank you. This is the third time we've had you on the show. Well, don't threaten me. And I'm hoping this time you let me ask you a question or two. Right. Ask me anything. I'm only you kidding. Want. Uh, the first question I have is you've had a 50, over, over a 50 year career in show business and you're still going strong and my question is how do you account for this kind of longevity stupidity really because if you put your life into it it sucks you up if everything is show business show business huh. show business i gotta get my name in a paper i gotta do this i gotta do that it wears you down i bet so what you do is when you finish your job go home don't bring the job with you then you got your wife getting go because she keeps saying, I got to get on this show, I got to do that, I got to get on the press. You don't do that, you separate it. And this is why I think I survived. Ah, and, and you got to be funny. Well, you have to be funny. And you said regarding comedians, you said today you got to have a gimmick. Oh, the gimmick today is easy, but it's very obvious. It's filthy down low life. Today. Comedy is no longer the way I grew up in it. There's no more message today. Today is rehab drugs, back to rehab, then we throw sex in there, you but bet. there's no more common sense out there. So, That's But it. I'm not angry, it's That's their turn, sure. it's what the country wants. Some of these guys are selling out universities. I read somewhere that you never hang out with other comedians. Is that true? That's like going into a volcano with hot lava, because the comedians are me, I, I, I kill, I kill. <laughs> what do you mean you're killed? I gotta stand and go, I did this, I did that, I saw it, that was yesterday. What are you going to do today and tomorrow? Yesterday is over. Sure. Once you say you're an icon and you're a legend, you've got to continue that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, don't take those kind of honors. So right. I do, right. like I tell you, my next job, I go to my job and I do what I got to do, and then it's over. Nice system. Mm -hmm. Dip the bread in the sauce. <laughs> and when you forget that, you're not Italian, you're peculiar. Right. You said, you said once said, you said, I'm a semi-name. I'm a semi-name. What, what do you mean by that? Rodney Dangerfield is a name. He is, sure. Milton Berle was a name. Right, right. Uh, Richard Pryor was a name. I learned from smart people. Mm -hmm. Get the mm -hmm. money. Yeah. Don't worry about fame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have more money than all of them because they're now in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. They all have the mansions. They got a place in Spain. They mm -hmm. got a place in Italy. They got a place here. You want one body. Yeah. What the hell do you need all this place? All and it killed them. I turn around, I sleep in a closet. Nobody bothers <laughs> me, and you still got the money. That's it. Now, I, I did want to ask you, in the mid-60s, you toured with Frank Sinatra. Right. How did your relationship with, with Sinatra fall apart? 
I, I don't think it fell apart. I just think that um, I only worked with him once. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I worked with him with the Count Basie band mm -hmm. at the Sands. Yeah. And I was told I had to bring in my own bows. I never had bows. Now I'm doing Italian kind of material. Yeah. yeah. So I have a chart made of Way Marie. So I give the chart to Count Basie. And he come basically with this 20, 30 piece band is playing Juan Marie. Now get this, all African American guys going, Way Marie, Way Marie. They didn't know what the hell they were playing. So Nacha comes out and goes, What the hell was that? And I said, Well, Frank, those are my bows. What bows? You don't need bows. You're a comedian. I said, Well, that's what they told me. Okay. Fine. All right. Three, four days, five days later. Yeah. Jelly Rizzo comes over uh. and says, Frank says, take that thing out about the Saints. Oh, take it out. Yeah. Oh. I says, well, that's, I'm getting laughs. Okay. Anytime I get a smile, I think I'm a hit. He says, well, he wants you to take it out. Me, I said, I'm not going to, I want to hear it from him. So I bang on the door. Frank, Pat Cooper, come on in. Come in. What's the problem? Did you tell Jilly that I got to take out that thing about the Saints? Now he don't answer. And he's looking at Jilly, who's behind me. I said, Frank, no disrespect. Do I tell you what songs to sing? Oh. And wait a minute. Wait oh. a minute. Wait a minute. Let me tell yeah. you something. Yeah. Never worked with him again. But listen to this. Yeah. I got $1,000 for the week. Yep. Three days after I closed with Sinatra, I went downtown and worked with Joe Williams. I got $5,000 a week. Did you understand? Sure. I'm working with Joe Williams. Yep. But four years later, we're doing a benefit. Peggy Lee, Sinatra, myself, and the stepbrothers. I'm the MC. Frank is working across the street. He comes over and goes, Pat, do me a favor. Yeah. I got to go on first because I got to go work across the street. Sure. I'm just doing three songs and then I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. I got to go back. I said, fine. He starts the fourth song. I run out of said, How many times I told you, you want to work with me? Only three songs. He falls down and laughs. <laughs> Two years after that, we're roasting Tommy Lasorda, another rocket scientist. <laughs> All right? Frank Sinatra comes over to me and goes, hey, Pat, how are you as fine as this? Can I do the fourth song? <laughs> That's, That's and, good. But I got along with him. You sure. know, there was no anger between them, but right. I, I'm an individual. Right. If I can tell my mother and father, oh, cut it out, I'm going to tell a stranger. You bet. And when you move from New York to Las Vegas, like another country, there's the West out there. You need a water softener. I said, what's a water softener? All I want is wet water. $800, they put a tank in the garage. They fill the tank with salt, the salt is through the pipes, that's a water softener. Now for Italians, it's good. Because on Sunday morning, when you boil the water for the macaroni, the salt is already in it. Now, how about Bobby Darren? There was a story about you and Bobby Darren working at the Copa. Yeah. And he had to go to the airport to pick no, no. up... No, well, it was a flamingo. Flamingo. And he had to go pick up his, uh, his wife? Yeah. So I said, Pat, stay on until I come back. He only gave me 12 minutes. That's they had a have. clock in the floor. When you walked out, it said 12, yeah. 9, yeah. 10, whatever. So, all right. He's not coming yet. So I'm going, is he here yet? I only had 30 minutes. And I'm going, is he here yet? And he wow. here? Wow. Bob, he never showed up. I walked off. And the band's there playing his bows. <laughs> never came back. He was waiting for Sandra D, his wife. Right. He comes back. They didn't do, he didn't do the first show. Right. And he says to me, what the hell? Why couldn't you stay on? I said, it's three days if you're missing here. <laughs> I only had 30 minutes. And by the way, why don't you send somebody else to pick up your wife? You got a job here. You're not working with me no more. And goodbye. <laughs> and that was and the end of that. Now, seven months later, I met the Copa with him. Ah, there so you they're go. off, you know something? They're all crazy. You're not allowed to defend your dignity mm. and, your, and, and, and your character. That's what hurts this business. When you stand up to a star, this is a human being. All I want is respect that I'm, a, you know, I'm working as a human being. Right. My favorite story of yours uh, involves Paul Anka. Because you work with Paul, also at the Flamingo, 56 shows yes. in 28 days. Yes. And you said... Never said hello to me in the whole... God, never waved to me. I, so I got mad. He's singing one of his songs. This is after the 56th show. This is show. the 56th show, the closing night. I walk out. And I stop, his, I stop him singing. I said, Paul, 56 shows. How about hello? <laughs> and you introduce yourself to him. You said, hey, I'm Pat Cooper. Yeah, naturally. But you know something? You're not working with me no more. <laughs> Seven months later, I'm working in Massachusetts with him. Yeah. Theater in the round. He's in a helicopter telling me he's going to be late. I said, when I finish my 40 minutes, you better be here, Paul. I said, I'm going into the ocean, you understand? He comes back an hour and a half later, they cancel the show. Uh -huh.